Hello and welcome to Point of Care Ultrasound. In this brief video, we're going to review what the difference is between beelines and hepatization and kind of gain an understanding of why these occur. Uh, what I want you to do just to start off is think of beelines as infiltrate on chest x-ray. Now that can be a local infiltrate like we would see in an pneumonia or it can be those curly beelines we talk about or cephalization in uh, pulmonary edema. And hepatization is your consolidation. It's when you see formation of um, solid organ and we can appreciate that on ultrasound. So to imagine this we're going to first think of a normal alveoli. Now this is a very simplistic approach. Um, there's much more detail that goes to this but to get a basic understanding of what we're seeing so we can make a correct interpretation here uh, we need to kind of think of this in these terms. So if we have an alveoli and it has all these little air sacs on it <clears throat> we can appreciate an ultrasound wave coming in and countering that. Now remember this has to be up against the pleural line so we have alveoli right up against the pleural line of that parietal and visceral pleura and an ultrasound waves and comes and encounters that and what happens is that first beam that hits it there's going to be ultrasound waves come back and that's why we get that bright hyperechoic line and we can see that lung sliding. Now the issue with the rest of it is is that as that ultrasound beam travels on it disperses just like when I talk in the air anybody can hear me in the surrounding area as long as my voice can carry that far well these ultrasound waves are going to start to scatter too they don't travel in a straight direction they don't have fluid content to help them do that and so as they scatter they become less organized and as become as they become less organized they can't make it back to the ultrasound probe and we end up with a really uh, bad haze in the back and so when we look at this we end up with a uh, plural line like we have here and that's that bright line that we were talking about so here's our pleural line and that's where we're going to look for our lung sliding and we can see that in normal lung and then we're going to have a rib and rib shadow down here okay so everything else below that's going to be disorganized so when we look at this image same thing we're going to have our pleural lines right here and we can see those bright white lines and we can see that lung sliding and then we have our rib right here and some uh, rib shadow behind it. Now if we look deep to these pleural lines down in here it's all disorganized. We can't see anything. We can't make anything of it. And that is what we're going to typically see on a lung ultrasound when it's normal. And that's because those uh, ultrasound waves are getting past that pleural line. They're getting into the air. They're getting scattered. They're not organized and they're not making it back to the ultrasound probe. Now when we think about interstitial edema we're going to look at those same air sacs and they're going to be filled with some degree of water. And as they're filled with water, that prevents the air or the ultrasound waves from becoming scattered or disorganized. And so what happens is that first ultrasound beam is going to return some, give us that bright pleural line, and then some of those are going to travel on through that air. And they can only travel so far before they hit liquid, and then they're going to travel and stay organized. And as they stay organized, they're going to continue to try to return as they encounter uh, tissue and so or more air areas and this is what we're going to do is we're going to have continuous ultrasound beams as we see here you know in this simplistic interpretation or representation is that they're going to travel back to the probe and so we see that they do spread out but that they're all able to return to the probe and so by doing so we're going to get something that looks like this and what we can see here is that we so what we're able to see here is B lines and we see here at the top of the screen we see a B line start at the pleural line and it extends to the far field and it spreads out now this is why they got the name comet tails is because they have a leading point and then they extend to the deep or the far field and they don't decrease in strength they maintain that now if we have one of these over here this is not a B line that does not extend to the far field and this is essentially what we call a reverberation artifact like we can see with needles and different things but this is the same thing um, that's occurring and it's just happening because of the air fluid levels we see within lung ultrasound and this is why we get the representation of um, bee lines now we want to think of those if they're diffuse then we got to think of a diffuse process that could be cardiogenic pulmonary edema non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema or it could be a local process if we see them focally and that could be um, like a pneumonia or uh, something similar to that, the bronchitis, those type of things. So now we see in this example, we see B lines at the top of the screen. 
and we see our rib shadows and we can see those B lines extending from the plural line all the way down to the far field. Now this is what we would expect to see. Now if we see, we want to see two to three of these per rib space or in contiguous rib spaces or in adjacent areas. Um, if we see them diffusely, like I said, that's going to be our, it's an interstitial edema, but it is a diffuse pulmonary edema, which could be cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic. If we see it focally, we got to think of a focal process, most likely infection or pneumonia or an irritant of some sort. Now let's talk about consolidation. So consolidation on a chest x-ray is going to be uh, wide out of that area or it's going to be a solid appearing lung. And we're going to see the same thing on lung ultrasound. So now we're going to think of those air sacs being filled completely with water. And as they're filled with water, the ultrasound beam is going to encounter them. And some of that's going to return to the ultrasound probe and create an image. And some's going to continue on. But as it continues on, it doesn't scatter. It doesn't become disorganized. And it can continue on in a straight manner. And so as it does, we're able to get solid appearing organ. And we end up with an image like this. Now, if we get close to the diaphragm, you want to make sure to identify your diaphragm, which in this image we can see right here in the blue coming just like this. And then we see on the inferior portion, which is over here, we see our liver. But if we look at this, there is, an, is some area right here that looks isoechoic or the same as the liver. And we want to be careful that it's not mere artifact. In this case, it is not. And that is called hepatization. It looks like the liver. It just is essentially the lung becoming a solid organ. It means it has fluid in it. There's no more air in it. And we can appreciate a solid organ. So that is going to be, can be cause of whatever cause you see a consolidation on chest x-ray is going to be the same representation here. But hepatization is consolidation. So I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that that is uh, of help to you and helps clear, clarify why we see the different things we do. Um, just to reiterate, think of B lines as infiltrate. They can represent cephalization like we see in pulmonary edema. And think of hepatization like consolidation. Hopefully that's going to help you as far as help being able to interpret what your ultrasound means when you do the lung. Um, I, like I said before, I see a lot of uh, novice users get confused at what those things mean. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or feel free to comment below. Um, again, thanks for watching.